Hi, I'm Anna, and we are here at the World Maker Fair in Queens, New York. We've been working for the last couple days, crafting like crazy and taping episodes, and Teresa has been helping us out. She lives here locally and has been a lifesaver. And Teresa has a new um, a studio. You want to tell them really quick about your studio? Oh, yes. I just opened my studio in Bahala, New York. Finally moving out into the real world, out of my house, and into a space of my very own where I can make a mess and I don't have to clean up. And you're going to be teaching workshops and stuff there, too. Absolutely. So we'll have all that information where you can get a hold of Teresa if you live in the greater New York area, where you can go take classes from her. So you put a really great home decor project for us today. Well, you know, I love to take vacation as much as everybody else, and I just wanted to do something where you could have just a way to display your vacation photos. And I love the beach. So um, so what I did was I made a beeswax collage that I then encased into a shadow box. Very cool. So uh, like we're going to... And so how did you, you paint it the box? I did, okay. actually. It, it's a natural wood box. Okay. And what I did first was I just gave it a rough sand. Okay. I painted it a light blue. Okay. And then I gave it another rough stand, especially getting those edges and stuff. Okay. And I just gave a white wash over it okay. so that it has that And when you look. used the white wash, you used the white acrylic, and then did you wipe it off as you were I doing did. it? Okay, so you just do a white wash. Water on, and acrylic. Yeah, and just wipe it off real quick with a paper towel or something. And yep. you do that great finish. And you get that weathered you do. and sitting at the beach look. So I want to see how to make this really great beeswax part in the center. Oh, that's fun and okay. messy. So our next step, we are going to show you how to do that. Now, Teresa's going to show us the next step using some old vintage patterns. Yes. Um, this is just an 8x10 um, canvas board. Okay. Instead of, you can actually do it on the stretched canvas. I've done them on there as well. Um, and what I have in here is beeswax. And okay. I like to use natural beeswax as opposed okay. to synthetic. So you can just buy it's a big old block of natural yep. beeswax that you buy. Okay. Now, it, with that block like that would take forever okay. and a day to melt. And I like to use a crock pot. I'll leave it in there. Makes your studio smell awesome. And what you do, stick that block in the freezer. Okay. For like half an hour, it gets hard, hit it with a hammer. And then <laughs> it'll crack into idea. little pieces. Just be careful when you're dropping it in the pot because it will splash up on you. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a, like a, a stiff bristle brush. This one has wax in it. We're just going to kind of get it in here. All right. Nice hot beeswax in here. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a coating of wax just very lightly across okay. this. No, don't worry about making splashes. Here, let me hold that for you. Do you have to work pretty quickly, Teresa, with um, this? No, not no. really, because okay. this is just going to be our first coat. Oh, look, I've attracted the bee. <laughs> I the smell bees. bees. We're, we're outdoors if you haven't figured that one out yet, guys. So I'm just going to put just a general coat. Okay. And it's all bumpy and lumpy, and I'm not going to worry about that right okay. now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I love dress pattern, especially. Oh, I use it in collage all the time. And what's fun about beeswax collage is we're not going to use the, any kind of glue or anything. This is going to be the it's, adhesive. Okay. So I'm just going to stick it on here like this. And now it's not hot anymore, but it's still pretty warm. Yeah, you still feel the warm spot. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take up an iron. And I bought a mini one here because I'm traveling. And I'm just going to go like this and get that down there good and then I'm going to trim and fold it around the edges. Okay. And then it's going to look like this. All right, so now we're ready to apply the okay, sand. I was getting really excited. I couldn't wait for the sand. <laughs> well, it's messy and you know what I say, if it's not messy, it's not fun. I know, so, I love messy. so all you're going to do <laughs> We're just going to pull the sand up on. We're just going to pull some So do I get to sprinkle sand on there? You will, but see what's happening. See how it's getting cloudy? Yes. It's hardening up. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just kind of make a random pattern. Okay. And then what's, o what's over at the top is already completely okay. dry. So I want you to show that to the, ca the camera there. So now see how it's all, see it's starting to cloud up, and now this is too hard to apply sand to. Okay. So that's the beautiful part about beeswax, especially if you have to get a phone call and like somebody leave, keeps you on the phone for a half an hour. <laughs> You're going to use your heat gun. Whatever kind of heat tool you have, let it get nice and hot. A hair dryer probably would be just as hot enough for beeswax. I wouldn't use it for like trying to melt oh, yeah. and boss yeah, powder, yeah, but just for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this okay. with, oh yeah, see how now it's getting glossy? Yeah. As soon as it gets like that, just hit it with some sand. And we're just going to press it down. And then 
Now, keep in mind, if you take your heat gun and you start, it's gonna blow all it's over. Blow all over. So we're just gonna go like away from it, going towards the outside, just like that, and dump some more in there. All right, and I'm gonna turn this off, because I already have one done over here. So now Teresa's gonna show us the finishing touch since we have our sand on, and then you're gonna show us how to apply the photos, which is, oh, it's so cool. Yep. I actually like to use paper for okay. my photos. I don't really like to use, you know, inkjet. It can kind of get very cloudy and okay. and fuzzy. Um, and some of those photo papers will curl a little too much, which is nice if you like a lot of texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip this photo. I'm not gonna completely submerge it in here. I'm gonna let it lay on the top. Okay. The back will coat and then it might get a little bit on there. So you don't wanna stick your fingers in there because it's hot. Okay. So I'm just gonna take this kind of lay it on top like that and I'm gonna pull it carefully right back out and like I said you don't have to rush or worry and then you're just gonna place it right ever wherever you want and you don't have to worry too much if it starts to dry because you can then take your iron now you put the iron right over the beeswax right over the wax that is so cool look at that you know, and if you see some place getting a little cloudy over there. But it's kind of nice, too, because it gives it a little extra dimension on it. Also. Well, I happen to like that look. Some people don't, and to well, each I his own. I think it kind of looks like the waves kind of sweeping across it, too. <laughs> okay. A little goofy sometimes, whatever. All right. <laughs> and then how did we get our little uh, finishing touches? Are those adhered with the beeswax or with glue? These are adhered with beeswax. Okay. Before I do... Before I show you how the best way to kind of apply okay. like three-dimensional objects, I want to just, I added some color here and all I used was crayon wax. Okay, great. And the way to get that accomplished is you want to use your heat tool again. <laughs> Careful there, I'm dangerous with this weapon. And all you want to do is just show it right on there and see how it's starting to drip. Move your, move it around a little bit. If you want to add another color, that's entirely up to you. We're not going to fuss with it too much. You can put it on top of your photo. We're not entirely up to you. That is really cool. And you can either leave it dripped like this, but we're actually going to so smear it. So that's how you got that sponge look. Okay. Well, you can do a couple different things. You can either take your heat tool again and start blowing it all over the okay. place, which gives it another look all entirely. Okay. And maybe we'll leave that one just like that. Because it kind of looks like watercolor almost. We'll leave one that like so this one I just went over with the, with the iron. iron. Okay. And then you, you just smudge it however it is you want. Okay, for our last step, Teresa's gonna show us how to do a transfer. Okay. Uh, this is really cool. Right. First of all, um, this is the transfer right here. This is what it comes out like. And you can't do this with inkjet. You need to use toner-based copies. Okay. Now if you're doing just like something that's a pattern, it might not matter. But when you're doing words, it's very important to print backwards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down, upside down with the ink part down here. Okay. And then we're gonna use plain old acetone based nail polish remover. You do not want the non-acetone, it won't work. And some cotton balls. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna you want me to do it so it doesn't take your nail polish off? Ah, I don't want that. <laughs> I think you just want to craft. Go ahead. You want to soak it up really, really, really okay. well. And go all the way across. Keep going. Just keep going. And you know, I just always like take a little peek to see if it's coming up. Oh yeah. Give a little more there. I might need some more. It feels a little dry now, or is that all I need? Oh no, and that thing is soaked full. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, it's like magic. Oh my gosh. Isn't that I'm so great? I'm excited. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Now just, I love that. Just to note, you really want to use something that has like thick lines. You don't want to try to do this with a fine edge. Right, you want to. Yeah. Right. So just, you know, hold it out on your computer. Exactly. Which is, what, is exactly really, what I really do. That is really cool. And then what we're going to do is... We're going to stick that right in this okay, box. So you remove all your tape. So we'll already do it. Let's just go ahead and put it in. Pretend we remove the tape. There we go. Okay. There's foam tape in there. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of our wax and we're going to pull it up in there. Okay. And we're going to stick seaweed in here. Okay. This is like actually dried out from the beach. Did you go do that? Oh yeah. 
whatever I can get my hands on in nature that I can craft with, I'm happy. Okay. You want to bunch some up for me there? And oh, then sure. so I'll put the wax and then you can just... Kind of just put it down as you get it going just there. Go like that. Just stick it I in. Might have had too much there. No, don't worry. If it's okay. sticking out all over, you can always trim it later. Just stick it right into the wax. There you go. Watch your fingers. You don't want to burn yourself either. All right, and then you just keep going all the way up the top, and then that's what you got. That is so cool. I love this project. Thank you. This is a really good one, Teresa. Really different, and it's a great home decor piece. This is so fun. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. And you know what we say when creativity knocks? Open, Open the, the door. door.